looking to make some healthier habits this holiday season, make sure to check out our Moving Through Midlife community over on Facebook as we are doing a Planksgiving event where we are doing daily plank workouts. We will be doing an advent for healthy, happy hips this holiday season, and then also have a sugar challenge, a two-week sugar challenge that you might be interested in. Happy holidays! Hi, I'd like to welcome you to Raising Healthy Humans. I am your host, Courtney, a personal trainer and health coach and the founder of FormFit, a community where I help busy moms move more. As a busy and sometimes overwhelmed mom of three myself, I understand that it can be difficult to find ways to live and raise healthy families. It is my goal to help provide you with the information and tactics you need to help raise healthy humans. Today, I just wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. I am Courtney, and I am a mom of three. I have two teenage boys, 15 and 13, and a daughter who is 10, and she is definitely the princess in the family. They are the reason I do what I do. Um, 15 years ago, I was a teacher, an elementary school teacher, and I really wanted to be able to stay at home with my son and I began to look for something to do and while I was looking I fell upon a stroller fitness program it was a franchise and I decided to try it out so that was kind of what started Um, I owned that franchise for 10 years I have since moved on but health and wellness is still a part of my life and it has truly become a passion of mine not only for moms that I work with but for their children as well. So that is why I have created this podcast. This is yours and mine. It is a place for us as moms who are truly a bit overwhelmed yet looking for information and quick tactics to help live healthier lives. Each week, I want to be able to provide you with information and actionable steps that you can take on the topic we are discussing in about 15 to 20 minutes. So you will feel like you are making steps to not only living a healthy life yourself, but also raising healthy children. Whether you are doing your laundry, going for a walk, driving your kids to all those activities, or waiting in parent pickup line, Your downtime is within all the little snippets of the day. So I want you to join me each week as we show up better for ourselves and our children, sharing what we do to provide for our children to be healthy and secure, and share the products and how we organize our home to help provide our family a healthy environment. Whether I'm interviewing a professional or a stay-at-home mom, I'm hoping you will be able to find things that will help to work in your home so that we can all work to be better at raising healthy humans. Episode 17, Mom's Morning Routine. So no matter what stage you are in with your children, you may be one with little ones still at home, You may have older ones who have gone off to school, or you may be a working mom who needs to get up and get moving and start your day. No matter where you are in this phase of motherhood, I want you to begin to practice a morning routine. And I know when I say that, a lot of people get a little nervous But really, honestly, I hope that you're starting to understand that I'm not asking you to take 20 and 30 minutes out of your day to do something. My goal is to help provide you with tips along the way that you can do in a very short period of time that you find are manageable. So today I want you to think about your morning routine and what it looks like right now. I remember when my children were little, I had no morning routine. 
My day presented itself when my children would wake up. And that was when my day started. So immediately, the focus was on them, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. But I also understand that it maybe sets you up for a day of responding to things rather than creating the day that you're looking towards. I have never been a morning person. It has never been something I, you know, I did it because I had to when I was teaching early morning fitness classes, but it was not something that I enjoyed. I have come to realize during 2020 that some of those morning times are the most precious times. And I would encourage you to try it. And I don't know, you're going to need to look at your own household and what time everybody wakes up in the morning. And for those of you with real little ones, I recommend just waiting on this or finding a different time during the day when you might be able to create this sort of morning routine because you're not in that stage. You're not in that moment in time. But for those of you who have started getting a routine and your children are sleeping through the night and you're not being woken up every night, you might be woken up here and there, I would encourage you to really pay attention to your morning routine. And like I said, this can look like just waking up 10 minutes before everyone else. And in those 10 minutes, it might just be putting your feet on the floor taking five deep breaths, walking out into the kitchen, and starting your morning cup of coffee. That might be it. That might be all you have time to do right now for yourself. That is fine. All I'm asking that you do is work on trying to figure out a way to where you are not immediately going into responding to a situation, but rather creating your day. Now today I want to share with you a few tips of things that I've done. Like I said, in 2020, there was a hard stop in all of our lives. And at that point, I made the decision to uh, go all in on my personal business. And during that time, I decided that if you look at The people who are really successful, they all wake up early in the morning. And I made that decision to start waking up at 5.30 in the morning. And I would give myself an hour in the morning to do something for me in the way of self-improvement. And I have come now halfway through 2021. I still wake up very early in the morning, um, sometimes before 5.30. Because this is my time. This is a very precious time for me. And I have come to really enjoy it. And like I said, I'm not a morning person. So (laughs) it is possible for all of you. So I'm going to give you some things that I have done. And I do a little bit of all of them throughout the week. I don't focus on any one, I wouldn't say. Um, But I have done... A little bit of everything and I do try to change it up every once in a while uh, because I am not even though I am a creature of habit most of us are I like to change things up I don't like doing the same thing over and over again so the first one has to do with meditation and visualization I like to use the insight timer app And I will listen usually to a 5 to a 15 minute guided meditation or visualization to start my day. And for me, there is one, it is a 12 minute manifestation meditation that I listen to. And I love it. And I feel like when I listen to that, things come to me. So whatever it is you choose... Um, I would highly recommend looking into Insight Timer app. I know there's also Calm. I I have not used Calm. I know Insight Timer has free capabilities, so you can download that and listen to a few different free ones. Those are ones that I enjoy. So you can just sit there for maybe five or ten minutes and just visualize your day. You can visualize how how you want your day to look 
or you can take the time to dream about your future. It really depends on, you know, what, what brings you joy. The second one that I sometimes do is prayer. I have the Holy Bible app and I like it because you can look at the specific day and during that day it will provide you with scripture. It then has a devotional and it's usually some someone's blog or something that has been written up in regards to that specific scripture. There's someone who talks to you about what the scripture means to them. Then there's a prayer. And it's just a nice way to start your morning if you are interested in that. The third one is to read. If you are in a business or working towards self-improvement, there are numerous books that I would be more than willing to recommend to you. Or you could just take 10 to 15 minutes each morning to read a book of your choosing. A lot of people I always hear say, I don't have time to read a book. I miss reading um, as a mom, but I really just don't have time. Well, it doesn't mean you have to sit down for 30 minutes to read a book. It might be that you just want to sit down and read five minutes. You could probably get through about five pages of the book. And some days you might decide you want to wake up a little bit earlier because that's a time that you enjoy. So you have a little bit longer to read. I notice on the weekends, I will still, I don't usually wake up at the same time, but I notice my children usually will sleep a little bit longer. So I have a little bit more time on the weekends for myself. So that is another thing that I like to do. And that's one of the many ways that I work within my morning routine. Journaling is another one that you could do. I personally, I don't like to journal, (laughs) but I have tried different journals. Um, I have done the five minute morning journal and it is really nice. Um, I was never really good at doing the evening part. I was great at doing the morning part. Um, but once it came to evening, I like to read in the evening. So that's my thing. And I just kept forgetting to pick up my journal. Partially because that's in two different areas. In the morning, my morning time is spent kind of in what is my supposed office area, which is just a part of the kitchen (laughs) but my morning time is spent there and then my evening time I really don't go back to that area a lot just because my mind goes back into work mode when I sit in that area so for me I usually like to go to either my daughter's bedroom because she likes me to sit with her in the evenings or my own bedroom And she's looking at me right now like, what are you getting ready to say, mom? Um, Or my own bedroom where I can read. So that is one thing that I am not great at is my five-minute morning journal. But if you are a journal journaler, you might really enjoy that. Another one that I have tried with journaling is from Rachel Hollis. And I actually really enjoyed doing this. It was almost meditative because what it was was you write down your 10 dreams and they're the same thing and you write them down day after day after day and it gets to where it becomes a form of meditation for you where you're just writing it down you're reading it it is you know you're thinking about that and you're speaking it to yourself as I am I am this type of individual. Not, I want this, but you're speaking as if it has already happened. And I I thought that was a great one as well. Another one that you could do is breathing. And I know I've mentioned this numerous times. It's one thing that I've mentioned that I practice when I am making my coffee is taking five minutes to practice deeper breathing, like this 360 breathing where you think of your breath and your rib cage like a jellyfish, opening and closing, or I should say expanding to help you work on taking deeper, fuller breaths. That usually only takes about five minutes. So for those of you 
who have a very busy day and you don't feel like you can do much of anything for a morning routine, I would encourage you just to do that. I have a friend who that's what she does. She puts her feet on the ground. She takes five deep cleansing breaths before she starts her day. I'm not asking you to do anything major. I'm just asking you to start working with something and see how it makes you feel. And then the last one is a workout or a stretch. Get the blood flowing in the morning with a quick workout or a stretch that you enjoy. I offer quick five minute workouts on my YouTube channel. If you're interested, let me know. I can send you some links. Um, And actually, I'll put a link in the show notes for you if you're interested. I also offer a five-minute stretch, which is a great one to be able to do in the morning and in the evening. If you're interested in that, I can share it with you. You're not, you know, it's no crazy poses or anything. It's just real relaxing, easy for everyone to be able to do. And those are the things that I recommend. I encourage you to choose one of them, see if it's something that you can start adding to your day. And just remember that practicing a morning routine sets you off for a better day. You are dealing with lower stress. It increases your productivity. It prepares you for what's to come in the day. It helps you to feel in control. And it's providing you with healthier habits. So I would encourage you to give one of these a try. I'd love to hear how you did, how it felt, um, which one you tried. If you already have a morning routine, I'd love to know what your morning routine is. You can feel free to join us over at the Form Fit Mom Community, where we share recipes, ideas, a day in the life of a mom, Um, and I also do little challenges at the beginning of the month that you can join in on as well. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for taking time out of the day to listen to our podcast. I wanted to let you know that if you are a mom who's wanting to begin to start making healthier choices but are not sure where to start or don't feel like you have enough time, I want to let you know that I offer a five-day challenge that is free for you to get started on making small changes each and every day. It provides you with a quick five-minute movement or workout routine, along with a five-day meal plan with family-friendly meals that you and your family will enjoy. Just head to formfitnaples.com backslash fit in five to sign up. Go out and enjoy your day while practicing small, healthy choices that will make lasting changes.